We're now joined by the Commissioner of the New Jersey Department of Banking and Insurance, Commissioner, Commissioner Marlene Caridi. Commissioner, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You know, Commissioner, we're taping on the 23rd of March, end of the month, but I want to clarify this because it's so important and things are changing quickly. The Get Covered NJ initiative, A, what is it? B, how long has it been extended? And could it be extended again because of the realities and challenges around COVID? Loaded question, I know. No, but it's a fair question. Um, so Get Covered New Jersey is the state's official um, health insurance marketplace. And we had our uh, grand opening, so to speak, of the marketplace on November 1st of 2020. And uh, that is where residents in the state of New Jersey that do not have health insurance purchase health insurance um, prior to November 1st of 2020. New Jerseyans were buying health insurance by way of the federal marketplace. Commissioner, could you hold it right there? I'm going to yeah. ask our team to put the website up as you speak, because we want to be involved and help in terms of public awareness. What is the website? We'll put it up and you can keep talking. What is it? Yes, it's getcovered.nj.gov. One more time. Getcovered.nj.gov. Got it. Pick, up it from, pick it up from there. So... The federal, they were going on the federal exchange and what happened? So we, we were, prior to November 1st of 2020, New Jerseyans could buy, would purchase health insurance on the federal platform. Uh, thanks to Governor Murphy and our legislators, we changed the law here in New Jersey and we opened up our own state-based health exchange. Reason being, we could use the money that we were sending to Washington that was not being properly used for New Jerseyans to benefit New Jerseyans, and we were able to tailor our exchange um, to the needs of our residents. In other words, we went from a six-week window to purchase insurance to three full months. So we opened our exchange on November 1st of 2020, and the last day of the exchange of the open enrollment period was January 31st of 2021. Right. One of the great things about having your own state-based exchange, you could address the needs of the residents. Sure. So we have this pandemic. And prior to us having our exchange, Governor Murphy reached out to the previous president, President Trump, and asked that the federal exchange be open so that our residents who were losing jobs and losing their health care insurance could purchase. The federal government refused. Now with our exchange, we have extended open enrollment under a special open enrollment period for COVID-19 through May 15th of this year, 2021. So Commissioner, is it fair to say that health insurance, I mean, so many people will receive health insurance through their employer. So many employers are having financial, serious financial problems um, around COVID and the impact of COVID. So that means potentially more and more people are losing their health insurance, which makes Get Covered NJ that much more important. So here's the loaded question. Do you have, A, the ability to extend, extend, or is it, that's it, May 15th, it cuts off? So as I mentioned before, the fact that we have our own state-based exchange means that we can based on what is going on in the circumstances in our state, either extend or close the open enrollment. At this point, we are opening, the open enrollment has been extended to May 15th. We will then review the circumstances and then move forward from there. And we can extend it. Now also, we have the rescue plan that was approved by the federal government. The $1.8 trillion rescue plan. What is, what is the connection between that commissioner and the situation regarding health insurance? Well, the connection is that there's going to be more federal um, aid available. So for example, with our state-based exchange, not only were our residents able to get the federal credits that would normally go to them if they qualified for federal assistance, but here in New Jersey, we were able to launch a state subsidy program. So of the federal credits, New Jerseyans that qualified were able to get 
New Jersey state subsidies. So eight in 10 individuals received financial assistance, which lowered their premium. Now, add the rescue plan to this, and you're going to have more aid on top of that. And folks that before didn't qualify for financial aid may very well qualify this time around with this federal additional aid to lower their premiums. And that is the goal of the state-based exchange, to lower the premiums. By the way, another few seconds on this. And if I can ask our team to just keep the, the Get Covered NJ website up as I ask one more question of the commissioner. What has been the response to date toward the end of March? Again, this will be seen later. What has been the response to that public awareness campaign? And I've seen it everywhere. And I thank our partners in public broadcasting have done a great job in getting it out there as well. Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. And, and we've worked really hard to make sure we got our message out there. Um, I'm very happy with the open enrollment that we had this year. We have been able to enroll over 270,000 individuals in the open enrollment period between November of 2020, wow. January 31st. That's more than we enrolled in the last two years. We don't have the full data since we've extended it, but I expect that we will have added more to those 270,000 individuals who had enrolled. Okay, uh, in the time we have left, you're the commissioner regulating banking and insurance. On the banking side, and we have a whole range of banking executives come on and talk about their industry and, and more importantly, their impact on consumers. What, what is the most pressing issue in your view as it relates to the banking community and the community that it serves? So if we're going to look at what is the most pressing with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic, yes. Yes. we are looking at, and we've worked, we've had great partners in our banks, our state chartered banks, and even our federal banks that I do not regulate. We've worked with them for the mortgage forbearance, allowing folks to have some breathing room with also regards to the student loans program, allowing them to have some forbearance uh, to have breathing room. And we're working with them um, just to make sure that our residents continue to be able to meet their burdens, but at the same time, not have to worry that they're going to lose their homes because they didn't make a payment or wind up in collections because they didn't pay their student loans. So we're working with the banks and they've been wonderful to work with uh, helping our New Jersey residents. Clearly the commissioner um, has a very significant portfolio impacting millions and millions of New Jersey residents. Um, Commissioner Marlene Caridi, who is the uh, head of the Department of Banking and Insurance. Commissioner, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Wish you and your team all the best. Thank you for having me. Have a wonderful day. You too. I'm Steve Adubato. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by NJM Insurance Group, Englewood Health, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, Rowan University, Operating Engineers, Local 825, the Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., IBEW Local 102, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by Meadowlands Chamber, and by NJ Biz. Are you looking to be a part of a dynamic, forward-thinking business service organization? At the Meadowlands Chamber, every day we connect, collaborate, and innovate, helping to drive business and economic growth in the greater Meadowlands and New Jersey. I invite you to visit our Meadowlands Chamber headquarters, an open office facility with access to resources for our members, businesses, and networking needs. Together we will build the Chamber of the Future and the next generation of leaders.